I'd like for you to uh, take a minute, if you can, uh, Greg, and show us the uh, the type type of structure you're building. Uh, that that is the uh, the structure that Bob Farquhar is going to do in his build along of the uh, the Blair Line kit. Uh, what what Greg is doing, I find fascinating because it shows you don't necessarily have to just open a box of a kit and build it exactly as the photo is. You can get as creative in, in your own right as you want to with these kits and uh, build it to suit uh, whatever space or whatever uh, interest you may have. So Greg, I appreciate it if you could show your model. I'm gonna make this real quick. I've just got four photos that I'll show. I'm not done with it, but I wanted to get a jump start on Bob's build along. So uh, all I did outside of what the kit calls for was some creative painting and staining on the walls and I decided to make the kit as possibly a rundown building. Uh, some of the signs are rusting and the, built, the business has closed up. Uh, they ran, ran on hard times. Um, and in fact, somebody's even broken into the back door of the storeroom. Uh, it's all just modeling tips that I've shown and that others are gonna show in future build alongs. And it's all just using your imagination and what you want to come up with. And you don't always have to follow the instructions. So that's it, Jim. Well, Greg, thanks so very much for doing that. I'm really looking forward to uh, Bob's time uh, in building the Blair Line kit. I know a lot of people are going to follow along with him doing that. Uh, and I really do appreciate the creativity that you've shown in uh, the way that you're planning to build it. Uh, so next I'd like to turn to uh, Fred uh, Cosgrove. Uh, Fred and I have known each other for years. I first met Craig uh, in Detroit, Michigan uh, when I was a member of the Detroit uh, United Railway uh, Club up there. Uh, Craig is a longtime trolley modeler and uh, he's agreed to, uh, to start a series with us once a month on uh, trolley modeling. So, Fred, thank you so much for doing this. Welcome. Looking forward to uh, your presentation. Thank you. Let's see. Get in there. This is an introduction to trolley modeling, trolleys, and myself. Are you sharing your screen, Fred? Okay, where are we? Ed, can you help Fred maybe uh, figure this out? Yeah, uh, are you, you have the program up and running, the slideshow? Yes. Uh, you have to enable, you have to enable slide sharing. Uh, he yeah, has it. I, I know that. The trouble is I get the program, then I can't find the screen sharing. Okay, let's try that. Ed, you have a copy of it, right? There you go. No, yeah, there, there we, we go. go. Okay, good. Sorry about that. This is an introduction to trolley modeling, trolleys and traction equipment, and myself. Of course, trolleys are about as different from the steam and diesel railroads as uh, 
narrow gauge railroad tire. Nice thing about trolleys, they take up less space for turning around than a regular railroad does. And of course, a trolley uh, operation can be just one piece of equipment, a passenger car or a freight car, or it can be a whole train. And of course, like steam and diesel railroads, it runs, can run passenger, freight, and special trains. So a uh, thing about trolleys are they usually operate in the city, a little slower than that. Where interurbans is almost like a Greyhound bus. They usually run from city to city and usually out in the country in the open area. So they're a much faster source of transportation. This is an inch and a half scale car. This is G scale, actually 124th scale. O scale, HO cars. And we even deal in N scale. Hey. So they come in all different sizes. Myself, how did I become a, tra a traction nut? <laughs> well, back when I was real small, and this is talking like five and six years old, my grandma used to take me downtown Detroit. Unfortunately, my grandparents never owned a car. Even though my grandfather worked at Plymouth Motors, he was a foreman of the motor division, but he got a right to work from somebody else who worked there. So if we wanted to go somewhere, we had to walk a couple blocks down to the main drag and catch the old Martin bus, either to Roy Oak or to Six Mile Woodward or McNichols. Of course, we get Six Mile Woodward, we can catch a streetcar. To me, that was fantastic. I love them. Unfortunately, soon after, in April of 56, Detroit got rid of the streetcars. Well, that really was lousy as far as I was concerned. So we had to take buses after that. Of course, the steam trains were still around. I love the steam trains. Well, a few years later, wouldn't you know, they were gone. So railroading, as far as I was concerned, was over with. One time, my grandma came up with this idea of taking the train to downtown Detroit. I said, that'd be terrific, because we never rode the train before. So we ended up getting a ride from the neighbor over to the Ferndale Grand Trunk Western Railroad Station, which by this time was just the railroad police stop. And nobody was there. Nobody was around the station. So we didn't know if the train was going to come or not, because we didn't have a schedule. Well, lo and behold, train showed up with the big northern engine on it. The earth moved when that engine went by. So we ended up taking the train down to the Grand Trunk Weston's Brush Street Station. Well, at that point in time, my grandma says, well, what do you want to do now? I says, well, let's go a Bablo. Well, she counted her money and she says, well, I got enough money to go, but you can't ride any of the rides. I says, that's fine. The boat ride is great. So we walked over a few blocks for the Woodward and caught the boat. Ended up going Pablo Allen, had lunch there. She counted her change again. Oh, gee, I got enough money and we can ride the train. So we rode the train and we got back just in time for the next boat to sail back to Detroit. Great. 
And of course, we caught the street car. Where we got off, went over to the local donut shop and had a Coke and a donut, waiting for the Martin Line bus. Luckily, this time of the day, they were running their new buses. That took us back home. Okay, that was pretty exciting. That, that was great. But like I said, we lost the streetcars, we lost the trains. So next thing I know, I see in the paper, this uh, new group, Michigan Transit Museum, is moving a couple of the historic streetcars that were left in Detroit. Well, didn't think much about it. Of course, I was looking for some others. I said, well, I could get into model railroading. Well, went to the local hobby shop, and lo and behold, was a flyer posted wanting new members. So I jotted down the number, called it, got invited, got over to where they were meeting, and here one of the guys is laying girder rail. A girder rail? Uh, what's this? Turns out a couple of the guys were into streetcars, and it turns out they were members of the Michigan Transit Museum. So they ended up taking me down there one day, I got to see the equipment, which was pretty doggone neat. So I'm pretty enthusiastic. So we played around with the cars on the weekends. And one weekend they said, well, we're gonna go to Chicago. Would you be interested? Chicago, well, I never been any place besides Detroit. So got the okay to go and we went there hold up Michigan City shops. And I'm thinking diesel train, because that's all I see anymore is diesel pulling trains for passenger. And lo and behold, around the building comes a little Joe or 800 series locomotive. Wow, is that what's going to pull our train? No, that's all, oh, gee, so I'm thinking of diesel again. Well, a few moments later, a single car comes from the yard with the panograph up and we ended up getting on and it turns out person was with knew the motorman. So he allowed us to ride in the baggage section with the doors open and turns out we're doing 60 miles an hour in a 1924 car. I was amazed. So we rode all the way to South Bend. Then we turned around, went back to Michigan City shops, hooked up to a couple more cars and went to Chicago, standing up all the way. When we came back, we stood back and I haven't been right since. I got electrified. Of course, South Shore, I love because it has this Street running, it has these unique stations. What couldn't you love? Had Gauntlet Bridge was out in the country, was in the city. My goodness, it covered it all. Unfortunately, they closed up the Michigan City station, put in a pregnant bus stop. The orange cars are gone but the new cars are still there. So it still is pretty exciting to ride the South Shore. Well, we're gonna continue on with the series of uh, learning about various streetcars and trolleys. This is the, the latest car for Detroit. And this is the biggest car in North America. This is up in Toronto, one of their five car articulated units that they're running up there. We're also going to check out the interurbans. And the freight and work equipment. 
This is a freight motor. And there's a converted uh, freight car in the back. This is a uh, snow uh, sweeper. This is a line car. And a steeple cab. So that's just some of the various equipment you may find at a uh, interurban or a trolley place. Plus, for those of you who are, who are scared of the overhead wire, which is really nothing to be scared about, we're going to talk about systems that use the third rail, like the Chicago Aurora and Algin. The Norris Town Line that used the famous bullet cars, and it's still in service today. Of course, the North Shore Line and Chicago Transit. You definitely can see the third rail here. So this is uh, basically until next month, the end. Thank you. Any questions? Any answers? <laughs> Fred, I think you did well, a thank great you. job. Thank you. Did a great job for an introduction. Okay. And thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Look forward to you next month. Thank you. Uh, hopefully. Uh, when I get back up to Michigan, I'll have more source of materials and cars to access for the program. Well, that's great. We'll look forward to it. Thanks again. Yeah.